Hey, Marcel, welcome back. I just wanted to, to know why, uh, what was the biggest draw in coming back to the Braves, and was that at the top of his list all along after his one year with the team? Yeah, for, for me, I, I was going to say thanks, God. Thanks, Lord, give me the opportunity the same. So I try to, I try to give you the opportunity to them. As a free agency, I just wait the last moment to, to, to then get into the, to the conversation and stand in team to, to try to resign again. And, and finally, we, we, we made it. And, and I, feel, I feel happy to the, the, the be with the team. So last year was an amazing, amazing year for me. And, and the team and all the organization and the coaching staff, I love them and we tricking good and we have a good relationship and as a player is is the mo most most comfortable that, that you can have you had it right right there Gracias. anybody else have a question back to you dave okay <laughs> alex um where does this uh, how high was this on the priority list and did you did it ever kind of worry you that it was taking this long or is that just the way this market was playing out yeah look he's we said this i think at the beginning of the offseason we'd love to have him back um you know i didn't get, i didn't know marcel obviously when we signed him we did a lot of work on him and i told him this several times during the year um i was impressed with the person as i was as the performance obviously he played really well but um, getting to know him a little bit over the course of the season, very accountable, responsible, um, tremendous teammate, uh, very honest, humble at the same time, just everything that you want. And um, I think like he talked about a little bit just now, I think our environment really fit him well and we got the best out of him. And he gave, he helped the team in so many ways, both on the field and, and in the room. Did you wait for the DL decision, hoping that it would be made? Or all along, did you think, you know what, either way, we still want him back because of all that he brought, what you just said? Yeah, we, we wanted him back. Uh, obviously, we wanted a, a right in middle of the order bat if we could. That was the ideal scenario for us. Um, and like anything, sometimes these things just take, take time. So, um, But he was definitely a priority. You don't know how things are, are going to go. Uh, but, you know, and, and having spoken to him, um, I knew that Atlanta was his first choice, and he was our first choice, and we we're glad that we were able to get it done. Jeff? Yeah, following that up, Alex, and also for Marcel, was, it, was there a point in this offseason where either of you or both of you thought you would not be back or he would not be back? Either one first doesn't matter. Let Mar I'll let Marcel go there. What? 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 what, what repeat again. I, is what, the poor connection? What, what, was there a point this off season, or even when last season ended, where you believed you would not be back with the Braves because of the market? Uh, sometimes yes. You know, the 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 market was higher when when. when when I finish the season, soon as soon as the season end up, the market going going drop down, and then all of those players, there wasn't a free agency, they like trying to find a way to to get a new place. So uh, my mind was always with with Alana, because I I just wanted the the them say something, the to to start resign me back. So. I just give it over the time the opportunity. I just my door was open to them, so I was at the market, find some, find find a new place, but at the same time I just I just still waiting for for their their decision, you know. Alex, yeah, um, no, did I feel like uh, look? You don't know how things are gonna go, but were there ever moments I felt that you know we definitely weren't bringing them back or wasn't coming back? No. Um, I think we, you know, we obviously like everybody. We follow the market as things are going on. Um, and, you know, I felt confident just, you know, knowing I felt Marcel was sincere that Atlanta is where he wanted to be and uh, that we were his first choice. And, you know, most times when that occurs that, you know, they'll, they'll give you last crack when the time comes. So 
I think sometimes uh, players need to go through the process and see what's out there, see what their offers are. Um, and then when they're ready to make a decision and ready to sign, we're able to get something done fast. David? Yeah, I have a question for, for Alex about uh, Marcel's defense. Uh, a lot of people have varying opinions there on the quality of his defense. Uh, defensive metrics, frankly, uh, vary on that. What do the team's uh, internal metrics say? And, you know, and what are the plans for Marcel uh, on, you know, in, in the outfield? Yeah, Marcel is our everyday left fielder. Um, look, he, he still played quite a bit of outfield last year. I think it was 19 games or so. Um, I think he's played a lot more left field the last few years, so he looked more comfortable there. I think he, we put him out in right field twice. Um, Marcel's got very good speed. Uh, that, that'll be, you know, for those that want to look up st stat cast and things like that, he runs well, he has good speed. Um, and, you know, I feel like when, when Marcel was out there in left the field, it was solid. And I know that he worked hard all the time with our coaches. It's something that he's continued to talk about to always continue to be a great player offensively, defensively, running the bases as well. Um, but I'll say this about Marcel. He's about winning. You know, I think you, know, you may not remember this, but you know, I think St. Louis was the first time he had made the playoffs. And I remember that came up at one point last season, like, Hey, I've only made the playoffs once. And being in the postseason is the most important thing to me. And I remember when Snit talked to him about, Hey, if we're going to put in, Adam Duvall, who's a Gold Glove caliber defender in for defense or move guys around or DH or whatever it was, Marcel's answer was always, whatever helps the team win. And a lot of players will just say it and not mean it. But Marcel meant it the whole way. He wasn't worried about free agency or this or money. Hey, if this makes the team better, I'm going to do it. And, you know, when you see that, everyone falls in love with him. He's a great teammate. The coaches love him. The manager loves him. Um, anything that the team needs, he's going to do. So, uh, and if he needs to work more or do this or do that, he's, he's going to do it. So we're excited about him, uh, but we think he could be very solid and, and left. Yeah, very quick follow-up on that. Do you think the criticism of Marcel's defense is unwarranted? You know, I think what happens is, you know, Marcel was obviously center field goal glove and so on. And, um, you know, when you're a star player like he is, and you're a great player, everyone looks at every little thing, you know, and if you make one bad play, people remember that when there's a bunch of good plays. I mean, he robbed a home run last year. I know he's smiling now because he remembers when he went up in the wall and he robbed the home run. And um, I've seen him make a lot of really good plays too. So, um, you know, he's obviously a tremendous talent, valuable player. And um, look, I don't want to speak for him. He's on this call, but I know he takes a lot of pride in being as good a player as he can be at all on all sides. Cody? And Marcel, I'll just ask you, how does it feel when people say that you're a DH or no, and nothing else and you are you can't play in the outfield anymore? How does that make you feel? It made me feel bad, but at the same time, I just, I just, I just know who, who I am. So I know, I know where about the people saying, like, you can't play outfield because and in the past, Last year was it my only my my only my only year that I played DH. So what happened? What happened the 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 year before? So I don't wanna I know I don't wanna complain with, with nobody. I don't wanna like discuss with nobody. You say oh you you think I'm at the age? It's okay. So whatever the people say, I'm I'm, I'm good with that. So I take the positive to myself. And the negative, I put it away. Steve? Yes, for Alex, uh, uh, what, uh, what, made this, what made this all uh, work for you, too, on a long-term basis? It's, uh, uh, we've seen you make plenty of you know, one-year deals and everything. What made this work long-term for you? Yeah, I mean, I know there's um, – the Braves, me or we, uh, get talked about only doing short-term deals. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not something that we seek out to do. We just we look at every player individually. Um, there was no, I've you know, I've heard different things about we were at a certain number of years and then we moved up to four. We were never at three years or two years and we negotiated up to four. 
Four was the sweet spot for us. Um, I've told Marcel this too. He reminds me a lot of Edwin Encarnacion when we had him in Toronto. Um, just his demeanor, presence, the person. Edwin was one of my favorite players as a human being. Marcel's right there, getting to know him. He's one of my favorite players that have been around in 10 years of being a GM. So, um, you know, to have from, from age 30 to 33, um, and then obviously have the option for age 34, um, I think those are great years for him. So, you know, he's someone that he's a middle of the order bad. I think what he brings to the team, to the clubhouse, stability, um, all the other players knowing he's one of our core guys now. It's not someone that we wanted to do a short-term deal with. Our interest was long-term, not short-term. So uh, contrary to what may or may have been out there, um, we wanted a four-year deal. That's what it was. And, um, you know, we were, glad to we were glad to have that. We definitely wanted to go long rather than short because of him as a human being, as, as you know, what we know about him, what he, what he brings, having that stability. Um, I trust him a lot. I trust the person. I trust the worker. I trust the teammate. I, I've talked to him about this directly a lot, just what it means to get a long-term deal and what it means to be a core guy and the extra responsibility and the example that you set for the young players and everything else. And he's a guy I trust to handle that load beyond what I think he's going to do on, on the field. So he was critically important for us to have as a long-term core piece. Thanks. Mark? <clears throat> Two or three days ago, did you think you'd be back with the Braves? Uh, you know what? I was thinking going to, to somewhere else, but because I didn't hear anything about the Braves, and I asked my, my agent, like, hey, what, what the Braves say? What Ale say? And, and sometimes, you know, my, my phone wasn't on the side because I don't want to worry about what my agent and the team negotiating and doing all of those things. And what it was. Uh, Friday, I went, I went to my to my friend's house, and we talked, and, and my agent called me like, hey, you got a, you got a time for me? And I say, why? Because I I, I got to show you something, the, the, the race. The race, Tampa race, send me. I say, okay. They send me a couple of ocean. And then I say, Mm, I, I don't like it. We'll see what what, what the Braves say. And as soon as the Braves, Alex, brings on, I say, hey, let's figure it out. Working on this, telling them I need more this, telling them they the, the figure out this this number here. So we say, I say, okay, you know what? I'll go with them. Let's go. Alex, did did you feel like it just it happened that quickly too? Oh yeah, no, he's like. Like I said, Marcel's honest. He's, he nailed it. it um, that's why, you know, I know it can be irritating at times for media fans and that we just, a lot of stuff does not get out. Um, and trust me, I'm, I'm, I'm a sports fan and I, I follow the Hawks, the Falcons a lot here now in Atlanta with my kids. And uh, I want to follow stuff too, but to do our jobs, it's better to keep things quiet. So um, there was no offer that we moved up or changed, it was real quick. It was done in a day. Um, it started in one day and it ended in one day. Um, there was, you know, we stayed in contact, um, but we didn't talk contract until a day or two ago. And that's the first time we talked contract and it was done quick. Um, Ali, I got a, Ali, I got a question for you. Sure. <laughs> If 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 you was think signing Marcelo Suna is like like easy, why why you should do after the season end? If I thought it was easy, yeah. Hey, we're <laughs> what we're February sixth. Not easy. Long time. No, that's what I say. Like, why you should do sign me at, at the end of the season? I a hey, I wish, but. The end of the day, as long as we get it done by opening day, we get okay. it done. So, <laughs> that's the best that's question. <laughs> yeah. Hey, he, he should be on the other side. That's the best question of all. <laughs> I'll say this. I'll say this about Marcel. And I said this. You know, if there was ever anything that came up during the year, you know, you saw something, you're concerned, never makes excuses, ever. 
never comes up with excuses, this, that. Accountable, as an accountable player as you'll ever see. And um, I think what you guys are seeing today, it's a lot of people I think in the industry didn't realize this, inclu including me. So um, it's just he's a great guy to have a relationship with, and he's great for the team. So excited to have him. So, uh, Jeff, can you follow that question up? I think I can. First of all, Marcel, don't feel bad because we don't get direct answers sometimes either. So. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, Alex, you've had a, to say the least, a pretty productive offseason. You've signed, you re signed your cleanup hitter, which a lot of people, including myself, did not think you'd be able to do. And you added two starting pitchers. Do you take a, any, and I understand, you know, players still have to play the game, but do you take any sense of pride in that? And, and kind of a second part of it, how much of that has to do with, your belief that you believe the team is in a championship window? Yeah, I mean, in terms of um, pride and things like that, I just don't think about it that way. Like you said, guys have to play. So you can have all these plans in the offseason and sign players and make trades and you know, guys don't play well or guys get hurt. Or, um, I, I've said this to you guys many times. I spend more time worrying about what we don't have or how we can get better, or how things can go wrong. I think that keeps me on my toes. Um, so, um, and even when we're playing, if, you know, I know we've won the division by anywhere from five to six games, I guess the last few years, it's felt like we've won it by a game on the last day of the season each year. It's been, has not been stress-free at all. Um, look, do I think we're in a competitive championship window? Sure. No, no doubt about it. Um, look, when we signed Marcelli a year ago, I'm not normally in the habit of giving up a draft pick on a one-year deal. Um, I struggled a lot with giving up a draft pick on a one-year deal, but you know, we had a really good team. He was a really important piece. Um, and I know I said this at the time, when we signed him last year to a one-year deal, hey, we get to know him a little bit and we need the comfort to potentially do a long-term deal. We weren't prepared to do that a year ago. But getting to know him, getting him around our players, around our coaches and our staff, um, it, you know, I wasn't worried about the length or the years or things like that. I know he's going to work hard. I know he's going to take care of his body. Um, He's got tremendous pride. He wants to win. So um, we needed that season to feel comfortable about, about that and to give him this type of contract. It's obviously from free agent standpoint, it's the second, from my standpoint as a GM, it's the second highest free agent contract I've ever awarded. Martin in Toronto was the highest. Um, and it's certain, certainly the highest since my time with the Braves uh, free agent contract. But no doubt where we are as a team, um, where he's at in his career, where our core is, he fits really well. Back to you, Dave. Uh, Alex, since you didn't answer our colleague, Mr. Ozuna's question, I'm going, <laughs> assume, I'm going to assume that you wanted to see how the market played out before you uh, made your offer. What else can you yeah. – uh, go ahead. No, no, I'll answer that. So I'll answer that. So why at the beginning of the offseason? Um, beginning of the offseason, there was a lot of uncertainty um, from a team payroll standpoint. Uh, from an industry stand, standpoint, we obviously, uh, we declined the option on Darren O'Day. We non-tendered Adam Duvall. Uh, it took us time to get through all that kind of stuff. Um, I know that Marcel enjoys this. So, um, but, and, and look, a lot of times when guys get to free agency, it takes time. I mean, I have questions for him too, but I won't do it in front of the group. So I'll do it when I get in spring training. And my follow-up was, do you think between now and spring training, is that important to get your remaining uh, needs taken care of, or can you take it right up to opening day? I mean, do yeah, you still I mean, have other moves to make? With no DH, our position players are pretty much set. Mar Marcel and left. Obviously, center field is going to be competition. Uh, right field, Acuna. Acuna could play could play center field as, as well. Um, so if Acuna does slide the center, we could get another outfielder in terms of the infield that's pretty much set and um we can always add to the bullpen um we feel pretty good about the rotation at this point so i think now um it's more just being opportunistic if we think you know there's a player out there that makes sense good value and so on we'll do it but uh again i've said this before we're not going to force a deal there's a, a very real scenario that you might just see some 
uh, minor league signings, things like that. And this is the group that we go in the spring with. Thank you. Allison. Hey, Marcel, we've seen some of the reactions from your teammates on social media and Twitter. Who's reached out to you from the Braves and what have they said to you? Who is the first to, to reach out that they're pumped your back? Oh, I, I talked to Arby. I talked to Freeman. He say he say vamonos, like in Spanish, like let's go. And most of the staff in co uh, coaching staff send me a text. Uh, and I'm I'm I feel good to to be with the team. You know the the experience they I they they I learned last year with them was my best experience in my life. So I, I'm proud that they they be. Uh, uh, Alana Brave players and let's see what happens. Let's roll this year and the next year and the next year. And then when I finish, if they want to give me more, I take more. So, so I'm a, I'm a open with that and, and give it my best. Always. I guess, just a, a quick follow up. Why do you, what made this clubhouse? Why did you connect with them so much more compared to other ones you've been in? What makes them so much fun? I can I, I can have a I can have a bad day at, at the field, but no 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 as a person. You know what I mean? It's just two different two different things the 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 people had to have in in, in life. So if we, if we I'm going to work, I'm going happy. So if we I do I I do it wrong at work, I still happy because no every day you're gonna be perfect. No every day you're gonna you're gonna make the 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 world right. You know, so you have to be like always in, in, in good mood. So no, nothing, no complain, no upset for something that the people do and that you don't like. It's no matter if he do it, he, he know what he do. So I don't worry about it. I just come happy and bringing energy. Like, let's go, let's go, vamos, pump it up. Music, loud, talk, have fun. A joke, everything. Chris? Hey, Alex, real quick. Uh, if we take the word easy out of negotiations, has it changed, though? Is it easier now than maybe it used to be? And then the follow-up to that is, do you think we've seen something now that might stick around where signings aren't November, December rushes? They might actually bleed, certainly, into January and February. No, look, it's 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 always hard. Anytime you're talking contracts, things like that, it's hard. It's, it takes time. You have to be patient. Um, it's not enjoyable. Um, you know, Marcel can put his phone to the side and relax and have his house and not worry about it. But it, when we're working in the office, we have to stress and worry about it and try to make the team better and all those kind of things. But, you know, the one thing I'll say is Atlanta – um, and it's a credit to the community, clearly the fan base, the, the support staff, right on down in that clubhouse, hours upon hours in a day. What makes that place a great environment is the support staff and the people, and it makes it an attractive place to be. So I don't have anything to do with that. That's a credit to the people that work here um, that make it a great place to play where players like Marcel want to be here, and obviously the ability to win. And it's a good pl place to play. You know, I, I, I – you know, I talk about it a lot. I have a lot of, when we talk to agents, Atlanta's a very desirable place. You know, a lot of players see it. it it's a fun clubhouse. It's a good group of guys. We put a lot of time in that, and um, it's a priority for us. But these are not easy. Um, they're always a grind. Uh, you're just glad when you get the result that you want. Steve? <clears throat> yeah, uh, Alex, uh, uh, I don't know if uh, as, as have you talked to Freddie since uh, since this happened and and uh, am I is it a stretch at all to to wonder about how this might affect the ongoing negotiations with him as far as trying to get him uh, extended? Well, Freddie sent me a text too. Um, he was very excited because now he gets Marcel to hit hit behind him, um, you know, and obviously he loves Marcel as a teammate too and everything else. In terms of the negotiations, uh, I'm going to get Marcel to do his deal because he can do it fast and early. So 
Mar Marcel will be handling the Freddie Freeman ex uh, deal. So he, he can do it and see what it's like to be a GM. Um, and, uh, but look, in terms of Freddie, you know, just like this, we're, we're going to keep it very, very private. Uh, we want to keep him. That goes without saying. Um, I can't say enough about him as a player and everything he, he brings and he means. But uh, just like Marcel, all I said at the end of the season was we'd love to have him back. And beyond that, you don't know how things are going to go. Same thing with Freddie. Uh, we want him back. We want him to continue as a brave. And then the rest, I hope, is the next time. Hopefully we're not doing a Zoom call. Um, you know, yeah. we, we announced that he's, that, that he's here for a long period of time. Well, I might ask Marcel then how much he's looking forward to, <laughs> to playing, playing with Freddie uh, for more than one more year. Ah, uh, you know, last year, last year, last year, I wasn't like, I wasn't last year, like, like in my mind, like, oh my God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm only gonna play one year with, with Freddie. I like to play with him because for me, he's one of the hitters that, 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 that I can understand more than any hitter I, I, I hit behind. So, so with him, it's like he go there, grind it, hit a foul ball in the in the in the in the in the knee and he does him like I like a pain or something. He's like a strong man. He give me everything for 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 the for the teammate. So he doesn't like talk. I have I have a player that, that doesn't like talk so so much. But I find a way they, they get the they get off a smile or or, <laughs> or or get in conversation with, with, with them, you know? Right. I'm I'm a, I'm a, the, the, I'm a kind of player that they always like find something to to make him people happy, you know. To the people all, all, all the time thinking like in the right way, you know? like like oh that's funny and, and smile and, and, and laugh and I like it. Some some something that that, that you cannot complain all the day, you know. Right. Thanks, Marcel. Jeff, Alex, I know you always say that you you always have something to worry about, um, but is there any way at all to compare how you feel about this roster right now compared to the previous two or three off seasons going into spring training? Um, I mean, 2018 was my first year, right? So it was just, hey, I, you know, I got to learn the team, the roster, the staff. So. I didn't have any, you know, other than being new to the organization. Going into 2019, 20, yeah, you know what? I, I guess I, um, you're never satisfied. You could always look like, enough. You know, if we had a little, if we had one more bat or one more reliever, is our bench strong enough? So, um, and look, a big part of this is health too, right? You need some guys to step up and have big years. Um, and then there's other guys that you might have expectations for that don't perform as well or get hurt. So, you know, I, and I say this, you want to have as much depth as you can. You know, things go wrong. You have guys that could step in and get the job done. So, um, you know, you look at last year, Matzik and Minter, two guys that really stepped up in our bullpen. You know, those were – no one expected that going into the year. Um, Adam Duvall taking an everyday role and I think being third in the NL in home runs. Um, that wasn't expected as well. So, you need some things to break right, but – you know, I, I never look back at rosters um, from one year to the other. Um, you're just looking to try to build as competitive a team as you can, as deep a team as you can. And you know, the one thing, you don't react to it, but you pay attention to it, that the NL East has gotten better. I mean, all five clubs, um, obviously two of us made the playoffs um, with, with, with Miami and us. And those other clubs that didn't make the playoffs got a lot better. It's going to be a grind. I worry about this division each year, and every club's gotten better and improved. So um, I expect it to be really, really tough. Beyond uh, the obvious, which is don't get injured, <clears throat> is there anything you've learned as a GM over the last couple of years in terms of what it takes to build a championship roster? Uh, you know, I think like anything, I think you do. I, you know, you try to learn from each year. So I can tell you, um, 2018, uh, Losing to the Dodgers in the playoffs, just we didn't have enough power. And that led to the Donaldson signing. 2019, uh, bullpen felt like we were just a little bit short. And then having to live through a uh, trade deadline. You know, we were successful. We got some deals done. But just like, you know, we were talking about before with any negotiations, 
trade deadline, having to go get bullpen help, a lot of it. Uh, I don't want to be in that position again. And we were pretty aggressive uh, last offseason getting bullpen, whether that's Martin, O'Day, Smith, really solidifying the bullpen. So now, um, look, we had a really good club. I think we had a World Series caliber club. I thought so in 2019 as well. Um, you know, things, you need things to break right and so on. But I think everybody on our roster believes that we are capable of winning the World Series. So you know, having a deep bullpen was critically important. I think um, in the playoffs, our rotation did a great job. That was uh, certainly something that you take away from there. Is as good as the offense was, we needed a pitch from the rot rotation because all these staffs are really good. So that was that led to the Morton and Smiley signings, certainly, and you're trying to get through six months. Um, but, you know, you're always learning. You're always learning, and you need to adjust at all, all times.